needed to be refreshed. My, my brand needed to be looked over again. And I thought, I have to do better than this. Mm. With a discerning crowd and, and eyes on you more than ever, to be better than anybody else, right. you have to in implement new techniques. Change is inedible. Like every, every success happens because you change something and, you, and you, it was a fear that was within you. Motivation only lasts for a short amount of time, but discipline is what carries you forward. I can't do this on my own, period. Are you looking at your business in terms of emotion or are you looking at your business in terms of what's practical? I still believe that America is the best country in the world. Where can kid of immigrants with no education become a physician? This is Small Business Celebration, where we're celebrating small businesses for big breakthroughs. Welcome visioneers to another fantastic episode here on Small Business Celebration. We're gonna be talking about, okay, my business is still floundering post COVID. How do I fix that? And you know, I've got one brand that I can be an ambassadorship. How do I get a second or a third or a fourth? And our guest this week is Justin Salinas, the owner of Cake It With Justin. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. <laughs> Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. And for visitors who don't know who you are, who are you and what is it that you do? Hi, my name is Justin Salinas. I'm from Bakersfield, California. I'm a content creator and entrepreneur and I own Cake It With Justin. And that is basically a cake and cookie decorating class hosted here in Bakersfield and all over the world where I teach enthusiastic fans how to bake with cookies and cakes. Justin, you started this adventure as a waiter? Yeah, I was a server at Olive Garden. Can you believe that? Okay, all right. It was it was right out of college, really, okay. and I didn't first have a- First job? First job. Okay, yeah. Yeah, first real job. They, they was the first people to hire me. In fact, I couldn't even get a job at Starbucks. Wow. Yeah, Target wouldn't hire me either. <laughs> And, okay. it, and it turns out it wasn't really made for waitering either. <laughs> okay, all right. But uh, I did spend a little bit of time at Olive Garden. I enjoyed it because, you know, I got to have great coworkers and of course getting to mingle with people was actually my first in to what all this turned uh, out to be. Ah, nice. And then you somehow got the cookie dough bug. I got the cookie dough bug. I was bitten hard. <laughs> Okay. In multiple spots. And let me tell you, it happened right after I got the job at Olive Garden. And really? I think I think Olive Garden really pushed me into becoming an entrepreneur okay. because I wasn't going to be a waiter. Mm. I mean, that wasn't in the cards for me. It took my sister saying, Justin, why don't you do this thing that you've made as a hobby for so long and turn it into a job and teach people? Really? It was not at all an intention of mine to teach people. Okay. I looked at her and I thought she was crazy. I, I didn't, I, did, well, I took art too seriously to, to go back to the basics. Okay. You know, teaching kids and people the basics of cookie decorating and cake decorating felt kind of minimal to what I was trying to accomplish. Right. But it, it flourished, you know, right from the beginning. I, I hosted a class with six people in my mom's kitchen and I saw the magic mm. right there. Did your mom have any influence on your development as a decorator? I would credit my mom entirely for all of this. You know, she made all of my birthday cakes growing up. Right. She had every uh, technique in the book on under her hand and she would just make anything you wanted. As a kid, imagine you're eight years old and you're planning your birthday cake and she's like, okay, okay. And I'm like, I want it six feet and I want it to have a baseball on top sure. and I want it to be lime green. <laughs> she, she would make it. <laughs> Sure. She would make it. It's mom. That's what mom does. And, and I, I'm sure people remember this, but the, Wilton had character pans and it would like, I wanted a mad scientist, I think four years in a row. And he came <laughs> with this little a tube with ooze sticking out because he was just crazy, deranged chemistry. And it was so cool. She also made this gumball cake. It was a gum machine, gumball machine. Okay. And it wasn't working. It was just a flat a cake. And you know, these are, this goes back to like the, the early nineties of this stuff. Right. And cake has gone so far, Right. but she kept up with it. She was making wedding cakes. She was making birthday cakes and she inspired me. You know, she was in the kitchen making these things for people for pennies, wow. you know, and just loved doing it. And I loved watching her. She would make, do you remember um, cake walks at the school fair? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, she would make uh, Spider-Man. She'd make uh, the, the Hulk everything. She'd make them all. And those kids would go crazy. Right. And I just saw that through her and I thought, how fun is that? Never thought it would be a career for me. Never thought that I would do exactly what she did. I just loved that she did it. I loved being involved. 
What was the breakthrough for you that said, this is fun, mm. this is a hobby, and what shifted, what was that breakthrough that said, no, this is a business, I can actually do this for a living? I recall this so well. I had just taught that six person class in my kitchen that my mom's friends were roped into. Right. They didn't even pay. It was just, sure. let's get together and have fun. But the next class I offered tickets on for my Instagram. It was, a, it was a very slowly evolving Instagram, barely had any followers. And when you say barely, you're talking 10, 20? Well, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm not humble by saying it was at a thousand. And I'll tell okay. you how I got there because sure. it was a magic trick okay. that I have underneath my sleeve for small business owners. Okay. It turned into 12 people at a coffee shop. And those 12 people bought those tickets up in seconds. I remember being in my living room and the buzzer going off on the emails just one after the other and within seconds those tickets sold out. Wow. So something clicked right away. I learned that not only is there a niche for this, people are dying to get to make cookies and icing and, and cake and whatever um, just from what I offer. Then it grew. Then it grew. So after that 12, it grew to 30. Then after 30, it grew to 70. <laughs> and, and at this point now, I have just taught my biggest class ever with 200 people in Hawaii. Oh, okay, that's a double whammy right there. 200 <laughs> for one. 200 people. And then you flew to Hawaii yeah. to do this. Yeah. How did that come about? I mean, this, this career has taken me all over. Right. It has, I, I, I have had so many great opportunities, but Hawaii is a special one because in this field, the biggest customer I find mm. is children mm. and their moms and their dads and, and their caretakers. These people and these kids get such a, a, a joy out of getting to be around cookies and icing and cake. I mean, who doesn't? Sure. And kids have the biggest sweet tooth ever. Right. Hawaiian Food and Wine Festival that I got invited to. Ah, okay. Yeah, and they have a separate segment called Kiki in the Kitchen. And for those of you who don't know, Kiki means children in ah, Hawaiian. okay. And they wanted to host a giant event of about a thousand participants, but the private class was about 200 uh, registered students, which is our biggest class yet. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You first started doing this in your mom's kitchen. Right. And then, you went to a coffee shop, or how did you find your next location to do this? Interestingly enough, Instagram has always been my way of connecting to people and their way of connecting to me. Mm. So the visibility of those classes offered me the chance to have someone reach out and say, hey, why don't you host at my venue? Ah. I remember her, her name is Amy, shout out to Amy, right. partial owner of 1933 here in Bakersfield, California. And it's a venue that hosts a very large space of people, and when people come to a class, they also get the option to buy food and drinks, which made it even more immersive. And I found that our business sort of aligns with many others that are in the market, like paint night or wreath making night and so on and so forth. Do you need a brand new kitchen to go with all that brand new cooking and caking you just learned from Justin here at Cakey with Justin? Well, reach out to Mike Saba, Zilla premier agent with Watson Realty, born, raised, and never left Bakersfield. Give Mike Saba a call at 661-203-8406 or reach him at MikeSaba1 at iCloud.com today. Mike Saba is also the sponsor of our first Visioneer question. And Visioneers, if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration from our guests, well, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And who knows, your question could appear here on Small Business Celebration, just like Cody who asked, our business seems to be sputtering post COVID and having a hard time getting its footing again. What have you changed post COVID that works. And you relate to this really well because after COVID hit, you were having a rough time. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic question. It's something I think a lot of people are struggling with. Mm. And mo there's multiple tactics I think that anybody could uh, try, but acknowledging first that we are in a very difficult space post COVID. You know, right. one of my biggest things I think that I've done to ensure that I'm reconnected to my audience post COVID is to re-establish an introduction to them mm. and to come back to my audience with fresher eyes. Mm. Because not only are the audience more discerning, 
There's some of them are struggling with money more than they ever have. Right. Some of them are struggling with feelings of anxiety. You know, there's it's it's a whole different space we live in now. Right. Right. So for me, not only did I main, I tried my best to maintain as much uh, as much work as possible on Instagram and TikTok, mm. and keeping the visibility going. But once we were sort of getting out of it. It needed to be refreshed. My, my brand needed to be looked over again. And I needed to find out if there was a way for me to just brighten up things a little bit more. Mm. Clean the in-house a little bit. Spring yeah. cleaning, if you will. And reintroducing yourself to the audience is pivotal because they're constantly getting introduced to new people. Right. And there's always new and new and new things out there. Somebody fresher, shinier, more cool and maybe applying new tactics. How did you do that? I looked over my content and I thought, I have to do better than this. Mm. I, I, I was good, you know, and right. I'm proud of it. Right. But like I had mentioned, with a discerning crowd and, and eyes on you more than ever, right. uh, to be better than anybody else, right. you have to in implement new techniques. For me, it was brightening up my Instagram with new colors, oh. putting in different elements like uh, sculpted cakes, hyper-realistic cakes. Right. Before then, I was just doing uh, videos on how to make a brownie, how to make a cookie. Right. And those were getting excellent views, but not like the content I'm making now that has better lighting that has a more scripted presence, or maybe not even scripted, maybe just more myself. I wanna go into this next phase of my business with new intentions. Right. So it just took me sort of scaling myself back and going, what can we change here? But you actually did something fundamentally shifting mm. that helped a lot. What was that? When you are on Instagram, mm -hmm. there is multiple people in your market who are higher leaders in their industry right. and people that are just beginning. And if you find yourself in the middle of that, or if you find yourself sort of sputtering out like this, like this question mentioned, then you need to find out who in the industry is really killing it. Uh. And start matching yourself to them, if not matching, going a little step higher. Right. You know, so another tactic too is just making sure that your customers feel connected to you. And the best way to do that is putting yourself out there. Right. A lot of businesses, I'll go on their page or I'll go to their YouTube or whatever have you on their social media and there's no visibility of them whatsoever. That is pivotal in getting a customer to connect with you. At what point did this go well enough that you didn't have to work at all, Gurney? Day one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, all right, sure. Right. Day one. Right. Yeah, I was, I was, during Olive Garden, I was taking custom cake orders, you know, and those always were really difficult. For 15 years, I've been making custom cakes. Oh. Only working so at So you all, were doing it as a side hustle? It was a side hustle and sure. a hobby, okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the money was whatever. Right. But it was, it was my passion, you right. know. I would make cakes for coworkers at Olive Garden, and, right. and that was a culmination of that with my sister's pressure to make uh, a classes happen. When she said do classes, and I did that six person class, I kid you not, the day after, I quit. I just knew it was gonna be something. I mean, I don't, I don't, I have this, I didn't have a plan B after right. that. I got my degree in social work. I guess you could say that was my plan B. If you yeah. ask me, I wasn't gonna do it ever. Right. It was my mom's plan B. <laughs> sure, right, right. If and, I'm paying for college, you'll get it in something sensible. And she, is she, you know, she's the biggest supporter ever. But she wanted me to have something as a background. And I, I loved working at Olive Garden, but I really thought after that first class, there was magic in those six people in my mom, ki right. my mom's kitchen. And whether I could, I just thought it was, I just it was going to happen. I don't know. Is what you do seasonal? No. You know, we are very busy during the seasons. That's where we oh, get okay. most of our money. Yeah, but is there an ebb and flow in the calendar of when you're, when you're busier or not? Or is it just one of these every twice a month sell out? It just happens. We teach cake and cookie decorating classes year round. Okay. And you can find tickets on cakeitwithjustin.com. Our classes are held every Monday, sometimes Thursdays, every week of the year. Wow. We haven't missed a week. <laughs> Regardless if you're in Bakersfield or Hawaii. Regardless of if we're in Bakersfield or Hawaii. I was just in Hawaii. I have a class in Bakersfield this Thursday. Now I have to ask, because you teased it beautifully. <laughs> How does one go from 12 Instagram followers <laughs> to 1,000? My sister started my Instagram account. She believed in me enough to say, I made you an Instagram, right. do with it what you will. 
and I had no idea how to work any of it. My own personal Instagram was just pictures of me and food that I ate. Sure. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I think we all went through that phase. <laughs> So what I did was I went on local news stations, I went on local businesses, and I started seeing who they, who the followers of those pages were. And I followed those accounts. Brilliant. And I don't know if this is against the rules. <laughs> if, it is, is. if it is, you know where to reach me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, listen, the, the people that are following local news stations or following local businesses, they want to get connected to other businesses, but right. it's hard. Right. It's hard. You're in a sea of other people who, they, and they can't find you. The right. algorithm is working against you every single day. Right. So what's one thing that I did? I went on those page and I followed those people. Now, was my intention to follow everybody? No, but I needed the number. I needed a thousand followers. So what I did was I followed a thousand people and maybe only 500 followed me back, but those 500, maybe even a hundred of them bought a ticket. And that was the catalyst and the the stone that rolled all the way down the hill to what I have now to 145,000 followers. And by the way, you could follow me on Instagram, Cake It With Justin. TikTok, YouTube, Cake It With Justin. <laughs> do you hate opening your electric bill? And when you do, it makes you cringe? Discover BSW Roofing Solar and Air for a painless solution. Let them explain the benefits of saving with the sun. Today, 45,000 customers can't be wrong. Call BSW Roofing at 661-327-7663. That's 661-327-ROOF or bswroofing.com today. And BSW is the sponsor of the Visioneer Games. Now, if you're not familiar with the way the game works, I have a random word generator here on my phone and I have no idea which of three words that are gonna be randomly generated are, but more importantly, Neither does Justin. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and Justin has to somehow take each of one of these three words and somehow associate it with his business. And Visioneers, you too can also play in the Visioneer game. Simply take any one of the three words that we give Justin and go ahead and somehow apply it to your business and put it in the comment section. And Visioneers, Make sure you also put the name of your business to give you credit for the association. Now, Justin, you do realize yes. that the fate of the entire decorating world globally is on your shoulders. Oh, man. Just kidding. <laughs> wow. This is going to... I can't wait. Shall we start? Let's go. Okay. Give our it to first me. word is plan. Oh man, something I'm not great at. <laughs> no, I, I'm an artist, so I'd rather just go into it and make a mess and then figure out what I was trying to do. Okay. But planning is obviously a big part of what we do. We put classes out monthly. Right. And what somebody would say, why don't you put out classes yearly and just have people buy them out as they would like throughout the year right. and, and just w have them all on the website. I don't do that. When the classes go out each month, it is a, a moment for the customer to go, this is only available this month. And there are many people who probably want in on this, so I better get my ticket. And that has been great for us. So we launch them every month and the lead up to it is always what gets people excited. And planning is part of that. Now, do I plan it well? No, in fact, before the classes go, before the classes go out, it's usually done the day before. <laughs> and I think we're gonna do cats. And I'll text my sister and I'll be like, what do you think we should do? I've done, I, at this point, I've done seven years of design. Right. So how many things are left for me? I don't know, but I'll run through Pinterest. I'll ask my sister, I'll ask anybody, somebody on the street and we'll find a design. I'll try to plan it, implement it, figure out the colors. And then it goes right out to the customer in days. Well done. You get the first word correct. Congratulations. Woo! Woo on to our second word. Dun, dun, dun. Extend. Extend? Mm. Wow, you know, this job is about making sure I have longevity. <laughs> sure. So I'm going to extend my abilities as furthest as I can. And one thing I do is I take classes. I'm extending my knowledge. Really? Yeah, I'm a cake artist and some might assume master cake artist. Right. But it's not enough for me. I, mm. like to, I like to learn from other people. I like to get more information and more knowledge. As a business that I feel is still in its infancy, right. I, I need to learn more. So extending my knowledge, extending
extending my experience, extending my hand to the customer. Because what I do at every class is I talk to every customer and I try to reach them any way that I can. So extending an arm is, is, is one of my most important things. That is two for two. Congratulations! Yeah. Okay, and our third word is... Oh! Inspiration. Inspiration. Oh, what is it? The opposite of planning. The opposite <laughs> of planning. I, I feel like inspiration as an artist comes from everywhere. Mm. But I, my biggest inspiration is the customer. They have kept me passionate about what I do for this long. Mind you, I didn't think it was going to go as long as it did. Right. I didn't even think I was going to want to do it. But when I see that joy in the kids' faces, when I see the parents light up, when I see uh, uh, couples coming for a date, and they just love doing what I do, it brings me back to one. It brings me back to why this is the coolest job in the world. Justin, I regret to inform you. Yes. That's three for three! <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> Pat on the back. <laughs> and part of all this, is the inspiration that you give to other people as well. And this is taking you to Hollywood, you've mm. been on TV shows and things like that, and you've grown this thing like crazy, but nothing ever happens in a vacuum. When I was on Is It Cake on Netflix, season two, episode two, right. I walked into the kitchen enthusiastic to win the challenge, right. but it didn't work out for me. Oh. I got in the kitchen, I made the best looking cake I did, and it just didn't work in my favor, and I lost that show. And not only, in business you can lose in whatever, but if you lose on national television... <laughs> Talk about embarrassing! It is the worst! Right. Because you have months afterwards people going, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, you know, being on a show like that and getting the visibility right. is a loss but it's also a win. Right. Because I had so many people recognize me from that. Kids coming up in grocery stores saying, I loved you on that show. You shouldn't have lost. And I go, you know what, you're right. <laughs> and so for me, it, it was a mind melt. It was a mind experience to lose on national TV on something I thought I was so good at. Right. And it took coming back to Bakersfield and come, going around the world like I have to Hawaii and all these experiences to realize actually, I won. You didn't get on that show by accident. No. Take us through how you made that happen. Yeah. Because you don't get on a, a show like that mm. without some visibility. Yeah. How'd that work? Yeah, right. The show contacts you through Instagram nowadays. It's not like you getting spotted in a coffee shop and say, you'd be made for Hollywood, kid. Right, right. Uh, what I did was I followed trends. I realized Is It Cake was in its first season and it was this massive uh, trend going online that was hyper-realistic cakes. This fridge could be cake. That oven could be cake. Right. So I played with it. I never had... Oh, I... so you did it for your own business. I did it for my own business. Okay. I said, let me try this out and see if I like it. And I loved it. Mm. And so by putting those videos out there, hitting massive views, upwards of 6 million wow. a video, it got good visibility. And that's because I was dedicated to getting on that show. I had a vision and I was gonna see it through. And you, some might call it manifesting, but I just knew that if I was gonna implement that into my social media, not only was I gonna get good followers, not only was I gonna get great views, but I was also gonna get to be on TV. Do you find yourself wanting to copy the recipes that you have learned from Justin on Cake It With Justin? Might I suggest you reach out to Executive Copier Solutions. The Executive Copier Solution keeps your Kern County office running smoothly. Call Executive Copier Solutions today at 661-322-0190 or visit them at execcopiers.com where they say, we can't sleep if you can't print. Call Executive Copier Solutions at 661-322-0190. Visit them at their website, execcopiers.com come today and exec copiers are the sponsor of our second vision your question who comes from michelle who asks we're a content creator and we're having a hard time growing past our first brand what have you done to grow past your brand so that you can have multiple brand ambassadorships oh i think that's a good question 
I have had multiple brand ambassadorships throughout the years. My first one was Fancy Sprinkles. Okay. It's a global brand that offers all kinds of goodies. Right. And they reached out to me because I was making recipe videos. And so obviously cakes and brownies and cookies need to be adorned with sprinkles. It was a perfect match. Well, yeah, match. you can't have the right cookie without the right sprinkles. Perfect match for me. And they said, we're going to give you 10% commission on every sale that you make. That was a, a, a catalyst for what I was like, I was going to push videos out. That was The more videos I could get out, to press, push that coupon code out, the better. And they were fabulous for COVID mm. because I was making recipe videos that was really responding to the audience. Mm. But when I was transitioning into hyper-realistic cakes, they weren't as necessary. Right. So I came to a crossroads. I realized that I can't keep pushing out the same videos that I did. I was transitioning into something else. And I think many people struggle with maintaining relationships with these businesses because they want to be loyal to them mm. and they don't want to move on to the next one or to create multiples in the meantime. I find that if you're too dedicated to one, you lose yourself in it and you don't have opportunity for more. Mm. So for me, I was going to keep a good relationship with them. I was going to maintain great contact. I was just lowering the amount of content I was making mm. at the time. And from that, then I was getting multiple uh, sponsorships with uh, Pillsbury, with uh, with uh, Mattel toys, with with many, many more. And the reason is because I was getting good visibility on my Instagram. Right. While I was building up my Instagram during COVID, I was getting good numbers. So that meant these people were coming in with more offers. Wow. And one would say I was doing well with fancy sprinkles, making a good amount of money each month off of the commissions. Right. But it was holding me back from being able, because they were exclusive. Ah. They kept an exclusivity with me. Right. And I just, uh, I thought that that wasn't gonna work any longer. So unfortunately we had to sort of break our ties, right. but that meant so much more. That right. meant multiple opportunities. And with that, I got to experience a lot of um, great things and, and more money coming in, more, more visibility, more Instagram followers. I think the biggest struggle is if you just are too dedicated to one, you lose focus of others. I'm going to ask you for a piece of advice that a lot of my past and future guests here on Small Business Celebration would like to learn. Mm. How do you feel comfortable in front of the camera? Well, I mean, we've got the cameras and the lights and the production crew and all the setup. How do you put yourself at ease and, and be quote unquote normal? Do you know what I do? And I don't know if this is embarrassing, but I used to do magic tricks and shows for my mom in the living room. Right. And I would make her sit there for hours and go, I got one more trick, mom. And she's like, okay, I'll take you. She sat there and she listened. Right. So whenever there's a camera, I have to take myself back to being a little kid in the living room doing magic tricks for mom. And that's where I feel my safest mm -hmm. because you better believe I'm nervous as heck right now. You better believe when I go on TV, I'm shaking. My lips are quivering. But if I bring myself back to that little kid who just wanted to show mom a magic trick, it makes it all worth it. There's a notion out there that, oh, all I want to do is have one post, one post go viral. <laughs> is this a good thing? I hope everyone gets the opportunity <laughs> to get a viral video just to know how crazy it is. Sure. You have never received more death threats in your <laughs> life than posting a cake video. It's a video of a cake. <laughs> I want everybody in the world to have a moment of fame just to realize how crazy it is. How absolutely wild and upside down and not normal it is. It is the weirdest thing ever to post a video, get 6 million views, and half of the comments are throw up face emojis. <laughs> I'm just making a cookie! You know, you know what it was? It was the steak. It was a, a hyper-realistic video of a cake that, a steak that was made out of cake. Wow! And it, it turned the internet upside down. Six million views, comments of throw up face emojis and you should kill yourself back to back. And wow. And it, it takes a strong person and a yeah. strong glass of wine. <laughs> It's no secret that there's a lot of business owners that are struggling right now. Sure. Is the American dream dead? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. This is the greatest country in the world, full of opportunity. And we have so many people who are willing to support us in this community alone. Right. 
In this community, I have met some of the greatest people ever who have allowed me so many opportunities. Our customers are incredibly devoted. And I wonder if that's because of how I've maintained my job, how I've been able to offer such a great product, how I've adjusted my brand. When they can trust you, or better yet, when they see you, when they feel you, when they know what you're offering, then they will be dedicated to you. And you could take those people years and years down the road. I have students who have been with me for seven years now. Wow, congratulations. That kind, that kind of loyalty isn't easy to maintain. We, as business owners, we struggle constantly. I'm not gonna say it's easy for me, and it certainly has its rough days. Um, some more than others, maybe. Maybe it's more leaning rough than it is easy. Right. And I wonder if we're crazy people we who just want to struggle. <laughs> this is the thing, is there's so many aspects to this that are rough, but when I see that glow in the student's eyes, when I realize I'm in Hawaii on a vacation trip paid for by somebody, or when I'm on television for what I do, it makes it all worth it. And if you're struggling out there and you're a small business owner who's thinking, this has to be it for me, I can't do this anymore, I'm at my wit's end, you're not alone. You're not alone, and more than that, I see you and I hear you and I've been with you and I'm still with you. And what holds us to this is our passion. I have a passion for this that goes longer than a degree I made in college. I started when I was 15 years old, watching my mom in the kitchen make cakes. That is deeply rooted in who I am. So whether I lose track or if I'm having a bad day, I have to take myself back to why I love this. And it's like a child. You may have your rough days with it, but how do you lose your love for that kid? You know what I mean? How do you lose, it's like my baby at this point, it's seven years and I, I, I hold this thing like it's my child and I hate it some days. I, I really struggle with it, but I could never not love it. It's a passion and it's been there for years. Justin, this has been a privilege. A treat, as it were. <laughs> for visionaries who want to learn more about you and what you have to offer, how do they do that? Yeah, you can find me on cakeitwithjustin.com. You can also find me on YouTube at Cake It With Justin. And obviously we do in-person classes in Bakersfield and all over. You can find tickets on cakeitwithjustin.com. And on Instagram, TikTok, Cake It With Justin. <laughs> and if you enjoy a small business celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify, and leave a comment. Say something nice about Justin and what we've got going on here. And I'll be right back with my final thought. Are you trying to figure out a way to make your business even more sweet? Well, might I suggest you read the Small Business Celebration blog? Yes, simply go to smallbusinesscelebration.com forward slash blog and learn from our previous guests. Learn what works, what doesn't, so that you can grow a strong and profitable business. Simply go to smallbusinesscelebration.com forward slash blog today. Staying one chapter ahead. School is right around the corner, and I was reflecting on a friend of mine who's now a college professor on how when she first started teaching, she was informed by her school's administration that she would be teaching a particular class the day before the class started. And even though the class was, the subject of the class, I should say, was in her field of study, it was not something that she exercised every day. So she found herself scrambling and taking the textbook and doing what some in education call a cliche, which is she would read the next chapter ahead of the students, put together the lesson plan, and so that way she had at least a modicum more knowledge than they had so she could actually teach them the subject. A couple weeks ago, I was sitting down with a pair of Visioneer business owners. And the first business owner was going through and she was talking about this new employee that she just hired. It was her third employee. And she was really struggling with getting this particular employee up to speed on how the business worked and how she worked and how the customers worked. And she was getting really frustrated in the growth and the development of this particular employee. And the second visioneer and I were listening very patiently, and, and the second visioneer started asking the first, well, what books are you reading? What content creators are you listening or watching? Or what activities or groups or, or organizations are you involved with? And as, as, the, as the conversation progressed and grew, the second visioneer helped the first visioneer put together an outline, a plan on how to take this new employee step by step by step through the process and how to keep on top of things. 
And that's when it hit me. That's when I realized that what the second visioneer was doing to the first was teaching the first visioneer how to create a lesson plan and how to structure the lesson plan so that the set first visioneer could go through and read up and study up and get more detail so that she could teach her employee. In essence, the second visioneer was teaching the first visioneer how to stay one chapter ahead. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week here on Small Business Celebration, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. And we'll see you here again next week when we celebrate another small business making a big breakthrough. Yes, we have dad jokes, and they're horrible. Well, I think they're funny. That's what my career is built on. Oh, we're going to go back and forth. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, what happens when you cross a cookie with a hammer? Oh, I haven't heard this one. <laughs> what happens when you cross a cookie with a hammer? You get cookie crumbs. Oh, oh my but um, <laughs> um, This is going downhill quickly. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you take a deer-shaped cookie cutter yeah. and cut cookies with it? A deer-shaped cookie cutter? Uh, 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 I, I don't know. You get cookie dough. Bwah, bwah, bwah. <laughs> that one was better than the first one, though. I think these are getting better. Okay, give okay, me your turn. Your turn. Well, I don't, they come naturally what? to me. I know, I didn't prepare. And Fine. I know, but I will laugh at the jokes. <laughs> That's enough work for me.